Morning, pen friends. This is... <laughs> Can I say that? Can I really use that phrase? Morning, pen friends. This is Andy Dorm from pandapensclub.com. And today, I'm going to be unboxing and having a first look at the Kako Edge, which is a pen made in brushed macrolon which immediately caused me to prick my ears up because obviously Macrolon is the material used to construct the iconic Lamy 2000, which was, when I first got interested in fountain pens, or maybe the second time I got interested in fountain pens, I was vaguely interested in them at school in the sense they were opportunities to flick ink at the wall and they were they involved desperate attempts to improve my handwriting which was um, a huge priority for my teachers but then perhaps unsurprisingly they fell out of favor with me until um, probably about three years ago and I started uh, well, I wanted to try writing in a journal at night and um, one of the ways I wanted to, or one of the ways I realized by dint of happenstance that I could intrigue and involve myself in it more was by using a fountain pen. I think I bought one coincidentally in lieu of a biro. What did I buy? I think it was a, yeah, it was one of these, it was one of these pilot um, kakunos. But anyway, um, second time I got interested in fountain pens, Pilot Kakuno, Pilot Metropolitan, Lamy Safari, and then I just couldn't stop thinking about the Lamy 2000. I couldn't stop reading about the, the qualities of the material people rave about, the, the sort of warmth of it, the unusual feel, some people even called it unique, and the design. That little, that compelling little bulge in the shaft of the pen, and obviously the writing. It's a wonderful pen. But when I heard the Kako Edge was also in brushed Macrolon, and it cost a fraction of the price, well, I was immediately intrigued. I was also compelled by the blatant. Um, inspiration that has taken place in the design of this pen. It says on the box, um, designed by, by Chun Sen of Kako. Um, and I'm sure it is thoroughly designed by Chun Sen of Kako, but let's have a look. And to be fair to Chun Sen, the design is in fact different. Once you get it out of the box, and you can see you're, you're, you're dealing with a pen that is certainly different. Its namesake, this edge creature, is kind of impossible to avoid noticing. The feel of, of the brushed Macrolon is, is not dissimilar at all. I mean, obviously, my, my Lamy has been used a lot more extensively. So this maybe has a little bit more of a, uh, a kind of, can you hear that? A kind of roughness to it. Okay. Same sheen on the top. The Lamy clip has its um, very, very useful, convenient and effective hinge design. And of course the Lamy has this lovely little click on the cap. Let's see how the Carco Edge shapes up in comparison. So we have the same clicking mechanism here. We have the same little, little, little features. And we have immediately, again, you can't help but notice, we have a section in Macrolon. Or is it Macrolon? It feels slightly cooler than the rest of the pen.
So, ooh, ouch, squeaky, squeaky, and un, un, uh, unusually it doesn't come with a converter with the cartridges, but I think I will make use of the cartridges in this pen in a minute. First, let's have a quick look at them side by side with the, the caps off. So the Lamy has its hooded nib, of course. The, that's where the comparison sort of ends. And we have this brushed Macrolon body to the Carco. So let's see how it works when it's inked up. I'm going to use the supplied uh, the supplied ink cartridge because why not? How am I doing here? <laughs> I haven't put a uh, conventional ink cartridge in a pen for a long, long time, it seems. I've been using cartridge converters, which obviously slip in and out much more easily, and, and um, other things. Huh. My lord. Ah, oh, there we are. Do you know I was doing it the wrong way around? <laughs> okay, so inking up the carco. Now, if I was still at school, I would be finding a, 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 a secluded little cupboard, a secluded little walking cupboard somewhere that I could go and flick this at the back of. But I don't think I'm going to be quite so reckless in my apartment. So let's have a look at how it writes and whether it writes. Who knows? Who knows, ordering things off the internet is, with certain vendors, a little uncertain. I think with this pen, well, I hope and expect that all will go well. So, I'm going to use Muji uh, name cards for this. So, purely because I can then hold up the results to the camera, which is positioned strategically above my desk. Oh, and the ink flows very nicely. Oh. It's too bright in here for you to see my terrible scrawl, but I can assure you the ink flows beautifully well. I'm sure I will insert some little close-ups of handwriting. Perhaps when I've done my nails. Side by side comparison with the Lamy. Now obviously the Lamy flows voluptuously and um, beautifully and you get that lovely suggestion of uh, pushing, pushing a uh, pushing the nib through velvet with, with the Lamy 2000. With the Carco. You get a much sort of uh, cleaner, monochrome kind of hand feel. But that's probably unduly, open to interpretation as unduly negative because it's impressive. How many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? Good ink flow. Not bad. Decent fountain pen. Brushed Macrolon. Attractive. Um, painfully blatant copy. Rather distracting virtually pointless clip. Slightly kind of rough 
around the edges, build quality, but then we're talking about such a very cheap pen. It's well designed. It's attractive. It, it writes perfectly well. An impressive little pen. But possibly suffers side by side with its with its great grandfather over here. This is the writing sample section for my review of the Carco Edge fountain pen. Now I rather superfluously write the words fountain pen just because it's quite a pleasure to write with this particular fountain pen and I felt like it posted. It feels a little out, out balanced by this the weight but I'm a bit funny about my balance. I do like a kind of People, some people don't like a light fountain pen, but personally, I like these things that fly around across the page for you. Nice ink flow, smooth writer, hint of resistance. I would use this, if it wasn't so ruddy ugly, I would use this pen on a daily basis. And if, if, the, if the clip wasn't so Damn, inoperable. Smooth writer. It's it's got a sort of a lusciousness to it, or a hint of that anyway. Which is, I shouldn't use words like lusciousness if I can't quite remember how to spell them. But hey, you get the idea. You certainly heard me saying it. Luscious. Lovely. Panda. Seeks. Jinxed. Zebra for quick game of whist. I really do enjoy using this pen and I'm going to be looking for alternative caps urgently.